Hello everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various wind for the Watfield Suns and the Fall Major Tournament in Golf Clash the game. Be responsible by Golf Clash and play them Inc. Make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. You can get the ultimate tournament guide for Pro Expert and Master by going to Patreon. Link to Patreon and our guides is in the description down below. You can follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also a ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. So we start off with hole number one and here we do want to use the driver that do gives us the most power possible, right? So the extra mile is the club that I'm going to use and here I want you to use as much top spin that you possible can as well. So even if you would be having max top spin, like as many to uh, like to fill all the top spin bars, you would use max top spin because here we do want to roll as far down the fairway possible. Max plus 15 is the adjustment here. And the aim here is to get the ball to either be into sniper range or into long iron range. The ball getting down the fairway and we get to approximately 360 to 370 yards. And from here, we do want to play with our sniper. The issue though is that I packed the wrong club. Sure, you can still play with a big dog here and you will still get yourself close. But the value in having a good ball guideline here is going to be so much better than using any other type of wood club so pick the sniper even if you have it in a lower level because you will still reach without any type of problems aim for the hole and then uh, then use somewhere between two to four bars of backspin depending on how the ball guideline will look and that's obviously the difficult part with the big dog here where if we don't have a ball guideline to follow, we don't really know if we're going to come in too hot or if it's not going to come in hot at all. Or if it's going to be perfect. Very close for a drop. I'm using no elevation here, trying to estimate my distance based on, um, based on the true distance. So true distance adjustment with no elevation for the second shot here on hole number one. So for hole number two, we're going to go for a rough bump. There is no excuse doing anything else. The only thing we need to have in mind, though, is that we will be having to change club if we do have a tailwind. But more about that after the shot here. So 1.2 bars of backspin, two right spin. I'm playing with a quasar. And you can see that I have the yellow rain by the rough line with the ball guideline one green square through the hole when it is headwind. If I would be having crosswind, I would be having the ball guideline to the hole. And if I would be having tailwind, I would be having the ball guideline just slightly short of the hole. Adjustment is minimum distance with a 30% over adjustment. Send to the ball and hit perfect. And this is going to be a very good chance getting a drop here um, for an hole in one. The thing we need to have in mind though here is if we do have tailwind, everyone, we cannot play with a wood club. We need to play with a long iron. So then pack the Goliath. To make sure that you do have the power enough to get there. So, so the drive here on hole number three is not going to be that hard. If we do have a crosswind or headwind, we're just going to try to land the ball on this fairway island here. If we do have a tailwind, we're going to push the drive as hard as we can so we can bounce over the final piece of the rough. I'm going to explain why that is important to do that in Tailwind once we are done with the two videos here. Two left spin, starting complete max distance. I'm using a power three ball here called a Titan. Maximum distance, no elevation on the drive and make sure to hit perfect. The idea here, once again, is to land and stay on this fairway and try then to get ourselves as close to the green possible on the second shot. Because the value in bouncing over the rough, uh, if talking about the tailwind route already, is that if we do bounce over that rough, we will have an open shot towards the green, and we will then have the possibility of get to green in two to lock in the eagle. Unfortunately, when we do have a crosswind or a headwind angle on off tee, 
then we cannot do that. So we're going to have to do some sort of a three shot play here where we use the big dog or the wood club that gives us the most top spin possible here to try to use all the curl, all the side spin, all the top spin, adjust its max no elevation. And to bounce on the fairway and roll as close to the green possible but you can see here even though i'm using everything that i got here i'm still not really close to pin so from here we're gonna have to play a wedge and this wedge is not gonna be easy so just for the display sake we do have a wedge that is going to be played somewhat max plus 20. you can see that we are not in the range of going for a dunk so we're gonna have to rely on the wedge with a pretty crappy ball guideline which it often is in lower levels so the, to summarize hole number three is that this hole is definitely going to cause many players not getting the eagle so if you can find a way with my help here to get an eagle you will definitely have an advantage over many opponents obviously i understand that there could be players out there watching here that do have much better clubs than what i'm playing with obviously use all the use that you do have to get the ball to green in two to simplify the way of getting the eagle but i would say even if you have higher level clubs and are able to play with better balls you know headwind and crosswind from t is going to be very difficult Hole number four, in my opinion, is very tough, right? Because at the spot that I want to play, I want, I'm want i going to play with a long iron, but the problem is that then you have a very bad ball guideline, and then it's going to be uh, just a big guess, and we're going to have two bunkers in play. So I decided to go with the Guardian here. Even if I have the Guardian in a lower level, I can use the backspin and remove all the obstacles and give myself somewhat of a chance of an all-in-one, even though the chance of dropping this shot is very slim. 20% elevation, medium distance numbers, and we're going to play with a Navigator to, yeah, I mean, to keep it free to play, but also in this case, keep it wind too, which is, in my opinion, very valuable here to reduce the wind as much as we can. We bounce where we wanted to. Problem is, though, we need to back up a little bit more so we have time to get the ball to stop. Obviously, those with higher level guardians has more backspin. Then you can aim a little bit further up and have the ball fall back or like roll back towards the pin. That's obviously going to be a better chance, in my opinion. But hole number four is a tough par 3 especially from front tee due to being in somewhat in between clubs when it comes to the long iron and the wood club so listen if you're not interested in getting to green in two to lock in the eagle then you should just play safe by landing on this first fairway and then to just play up to the right fairway and then have a very difficult wedge to get the eagle but here in this playthrough i wanted to give those players here that play from front tee a way of getting an eagle but also somewhat a chance of an albatross use the big topper doesn't matter if it's level one or level seven right all but one bar of top spin also one bar of left spin with the tip of the ball guide or the second bounce to be just by the edge of the rough on the fairway island in the center of the water adjust max plus 20 if you go into overpower you will have to apply some overpower too bouncing on the fairway into the rough and all the top spin will let will have the ball crawl up onto the fairway from here we have now locked in the eagle because have in mind that the par 5s of the Waterfield Sands are super difficult because they are long. Or at least hole number 3 and hole number 5 are very long and you will see loads of players missing out on getting the eagle. So if you, with my advice here, can get yourself in a way of attacking the pin for even getting an albatross, that could give you, if being very lucky, two shots up on your opponent. But most of all, this is a way of locking in the eagle. And by being able to play with a long iron or a wood club, depending on where we end up on the fairway, uh, fairway island there, then obviously, obviously going to have to adapt in that case. No elevation, max numbers. And here I'm 
getting into overpower unfortunately that's the case and then we're gonna have to use overpower to compensate for not being able to adjust as much as i want to perfect ball and you will see me miss to the left as i misjudged the position with the ball guideline but in the end i have a tap in for an eagle and that's somewhat once again the only thing that i'm caring about here on this very tough par 5 So for this one, I'm going to play down the right hand side here. You can see that this is a very elevated drive. We're going to play 20% downhill and in tailwind and crosswind, I'm going to use a quasar. If I do play in headwind, I'm going to use a katana to give myself the power too. No spin. I'm just aiming for the ball guideline to go straight down the fairway there. And then I'm going to take my shot. The idea here is to get the ball to be... Uh, in sniper range we don't want to roll too far because we do want to utilize the ball guideline of the sniper which is something that would help us immensely trying to attack the pin so now for the second shot it's important to check where minimum distance are and also in my opinion where maximum distance are you can see that we are very close to minimum distance in this case so i would recommend to play this one maybe around 15 to 20 percent of your club I'm using two right spin and ball guideline to be through the hole. It's very important for me to have the ball guideline through the hole because with the tailwind here, we're going to adjust down the slope. Adjusting down the slope here is going to give us, and uh, we're going to lose distance. So therefore, we need to compensate by having the ball guideline through hole, even though we have tailwind. I mean, it's a lot of details. Just aim with the ball guideline through the hole and you will be fine. No elevation. Uh, is what I estimate this to be. In the video, I uh, adjust for minus 5% elevation, which is what makes us just miss there barely on the right-hand side of the cup. In the end, hole number 6, I do believe, is one of the better chances to get something to drop. So, this one, I want you to find complete minimum distance, right? So we're going to find complete minimum distance on the right hand side of the bunker because this spot is much better than going on the uh, left hand side of the bunker. So here I'm starting complete minimum distance with a power 3 ball. So I'm using in this case uh, max left spin and I'm going to use in this case 2.8 bars of top spin. I would say that based on the wrestle, two and a half bar topspin would be better in this case. Blue ring by the bunker, you can see that I'm now back with a katana. The reason for that is that I'm not going to spend a kingmaker here. So I wanted to just switch to a katana in the end after finding my initial spot. Curl, which is outside wall left curl. And we are nowhere close to go into the bunker. And speed is perfect. But we're having a little bit too much curl in my opinion. Which is something we're going to obviously have to have in mind here when we play this shot. Unfortunately, we don't have side spin 4. Or we have side spin 4 ball. But I'm not going to use anything from front T. We're going to keep ourselves with the side spin 3. And unfortunately, depending on wind angle, we're going to have to use a little bit of curl to push the ball in left. Otherwise, we will always miss a right. Obviously, if wind coming right to left, that's not going to be needed. So, something to have in mind when you're playing hole number 7. So, we're going to start here by playing with the driver that gives us the most power possible. I would also recommend the power 3 ball. Because in headwind especially we will otherwise have to go with a lot of overpower if we are going to play with power two or power one ball so i'm using two bars of side spin to the right here we're going to reduce the top spin a little bit and play with two bars of top spin to make sure that we're going to bounce over the rough but also not rolling into the rough at the top adjustment is max plus 20 Adjustment is made, and when we do have tailwind or crosswind like this, we're not going to push up anything. Obviously, when having headwind, we're going to pull up into overpower. Then we're most likely going to have to use a little bit of overpower uh, to that. Bounce on the fairway. You can see here we're going over the rough and then roll nicely. And we do have some room as well towards the rough at the top. Getting to 350 yards is going to equal getting into long iron range. And that's what we are looking for, really. Here, I'm going to try to utilize the max distance position to help myself with judging what type of club distance I'm going to play, play with. Half a bar backspin, 
And you can see here now that I'm leaving the bold guideline very short here. You may be wondering why do I do that? It's because when having a, ball, uh, a club that do have that don't have a fully developed ball guideline, we need to let the ball have room to roll because the ball guideline here does not really tell the full story, and that's something we're gonna have to obviously guess. And sometimes we do make a good guess as we do in this example, but at the same time, it's going to be very difficult to be consistent when we don't have a good ball guideline to follow. No elevation for this shot. And in this case, I played max, no elevation, and we get it to drop for a lovely eagle on a tough par four of uh, that is hole number eight. So, hole number nine, here we're gonna use our driver and go over to the left. We're gonna remove any thought of playing on the right hand side. Why? It's because it takes us further away from the, uh, from the pin. Uh, and that's not something we want to do. You can see that I'm actually playing with a quarterback here, which is actually kind of stupid. And the reason I'm playing with a quarterback in the video is because I forgot to pack the sniper to get with my extra mile. But the extra mile is the suggested club there on the right because we do want to have the distance so we can prevent us from having to go with overpower. Max plus 20 is the adjustment here and once again if playing with extra mile you won't need any type of overpower but if you are making the mistake like I did and not having the correct bags uh, equipped then obviously you're gonna have to go with a little bit of overpower with our quarterback. Now, second shot, we're going to be kind of close to max and we do have headwinds. So I'm backing up, I'm not going to aim that close to the rough line. And the idea here is to get the ball guideline through the hole. But we need to have in mind here that in headwind, we need to have the ball guideline even more through the hole than what I'm having here on the video. I would say that we would need uh, approximately one extra green square through the hole for this one here. Now, as I am very close to max, I'm playing this shot max plus 10. But the reason I'm adding a mid in the info box on the right hand side is to demonstrate that you can be close to mid, you can be close to max, you can even be close to min if you have a very long drive and especially playing in tailwind. So have that in mind that you always need to check your club distance. Check where maximum are, check where minimum are and medium and then decide what type of club distance you're going to play. We are right in line like we are getting short in line which i absolutely hate because that means that we are not even giving the ball a chance to drop so have the ball guideline through the hole enough and then you will see yourself having a good chance making an albatross on a fun par 5 which is hole number nine thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for rookie division with various win for the waterfield sands here for the fall major tournament in golf clash the game once again get our guides on patreon link to patreon and our guides is in the description down below video sponsored by golf clash and play demic and good luck in your golf clash game